Good morning and welcome to Trinity United Church of Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today we continue our journey through the season of Lent. We join Jesus in a home where he shared a dinner with some people and an unusual guest showed up, a woman who poured perfume on him. But it wasn't a bad thing, I promise. We'll get to that in a bit. I'm happy to announce that we took possession of the Trinity House this week. We're doing a lot of cleaning and painting and preparing. And as you're watching this, two of the men will be moving into the house where they'll be safe and secure and able to afford uh, the rent on the, uh, their, the rooms that they're renting. So we appreciate the many people who have been praying, the many people who have donated items for the house, and those who have given of their time as well. Let's join our hearts and minds together for a time of worship. We continue our journey through Lent as we step inside a story full of difficult moments. We put ourselves in the picture of Holy Week so we may take a closer look and let the ancient story open us to deeper love for Jesus. Let's pour ourselves out with joyful abandon, ignoring the risks. Enter the story, enter the place you belong, not just looking on, for this is your story. Enter the story. We all know the story of the Last Supper, but Holy Week contains another important story that happens at a dinner. Earlier in the week, Jesus and his followers gather for a meal, and a woman shows up unexpectedly to anoint Jesus in an extravagant show of devotion. To say she caused quite a stir might be understating it a bit. We imagine ourselves in the room and we see the looks of judgment and even outrage on the faces around us. Are we ourselves moved by her generosity and outpouring of emotion? Or are we uncomfortable as Jesus refers to his own death? Does our complaining or anger really serve to hide our own fear? Jesus invites us to dwell in this story in remembrance of her. What uncomfortable stories are we called to tell in our time?
Enter the story, enter the passion, enter his passion. Let's join our voices in a prayer of confession. It is is so so hard hard not not to be be afraid. afraid. Sometimes Sometimes our fear makes makes us us less compassionate and more more judgmental. judgmental. We think we can ward off getting hurt by by holding back, back, unwilling to risk putting ourselves out there for the the sake of love, especially when we are frightened. You You entered entered our story through Jesus. Jesus. Now Now help help us us to enter enter fully into into the story story of your kingdom on on earth earth as as it is in heaven. heaven. Amen. 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 Our first hymn today is called, When Mary Poured a Rich Perfume. this there is no limit on love love doesn't run out and you can start giving more of it anytime you are forgiven and freed encouraged and loved by a God who wants you to live fully let us enter the passion of Christ and share in Christ's peace amen Well, by now, I think you know the routine. This is the time when we invite kids to be involved, whether they're kids of young age or kids of older age. Kids of any age are welcome to to listen in and join in with what we're doing this morning as we share in the gospel and a story. Today we continue in our special time of year called Lent, a time of growing close with God. We're at the halfway point of our 40-day journey to Easter. Before we jump into our story for today, let's prepare with our echo prayer. Repeat after me. We will dare to join the journey. We will dare to join the journey 
We will walk your loving way. We will walk your loving way. We will live your sacred story. We will live your sacred story. Through the things we do and say. Through the things we do and say. Amen. Amen. Well, in today's story, we experience a meal along with Jesus and his friends. Just like in life, sometimes there's good news and sometimes there's bad news. Every time you hear good news in our story, say, Amen. Amen. And any time you hear bad or sad news in the story, say, Oh, man. Oh, man. That's it. You've got it. Now let's enter the story. It was two days before Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. Amen. Jesus was at Bethany visiting the house of Simon, who had been cured of a terrible skin disease. Oh, oh man. man. During dinner, a woman came in with a vase containing a very expensive perfume called nard. She broke the vase and poured the perfume on Jesus's head as a way to honor him. Oh, oh man. man. But some of the people grew angry. Oh, oh man. man. They said to each other, why waste the perfume? This could have been sold for almost a year's pay and the money given to the poor. They scolded that woman. Oh, oh man. man. But Jesus defended her saying, leave her alone. Oh, oh man. man. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. Amen. You will always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good things for them. But you won't always have me. Amen. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body ahead of my time for burial. I tell you the truth that anywhere in the world, when the good news is announced, <clears throat> what she has done will be told in memory of her. Amen. Amen. Great job. We celebrate this woman today because she took a chance in showing her love for Jesus. That vase of perfume was worth a lot of money, but the woman knew that Jesus was very special and worthy of the expense even when the others thought it was foolish and a waste of money. I would like each of you to think silently about this. What's the most amazing gift that you would give Jesus if you could? What's a precious gift you could give to someone you know? Now let's take in a deep cleansing breath through our nose and sigh it out gently through our mouths. And let's close in prayer. Repeat each line after me. Loving God, Loving God, Loving God help us live your story. Help, help us live your story. As we learn, as, as we, we learn, learn it is not foolish. It is not foolish to give out of love. To give out of love. Amen. 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 Oh, man. The story of the woman with the alabaster jar appears in all four Gospels. Usually that means it was such an extraordinary moment that no one would forget. Not only that, Jesus makes a point to instruct those present to remember this woman. Alongside this story today, let us hear the psalmist who also speaks of extravagant love 
and presence in the midst of the valleys of the shadow of death. The tradition of anointing with oil goes back a long way, and in this psalm, the image of being bathed in oil is set at a table on which an overflowing cup symbolizes the kind of love we are to emulate as children of God and disciples of Jesus. Hear these words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Psalm 23. Wonderful Savior. 
None of us around the table liked the way things were going here in Jerusalem. The conversation had turned once again to the dire situation for many of the people we had encountered. Those who were hungry, poor, sick, disturbed. But does the Roman state care about them? No. At least we try. Every penny we can scrape up, we try to pass on to those who need it. I had to wonder, though, whether the talk of asking our patrons for more money right now was really because we were afraid. Before Jesus arrived to dinner tonight, some of the disciples had said, with the way things are going, perhaps we should be saving money in case we need to hide out in the not-so-distant future. And then she walked in. I saw the jar she carried. Beautiful alabaster. And as soon as I smelled the oil as she began to anoint Jesus, I knew it was nard and it had been expensive. And there was a lot of it. Across the table, the others were beginning to stop their conversations and looks of contempt began to cross their faces. Mumbling began. Do you know how much that kind of oil costs? It seems a ridiculous waste, given what we had just been talking about. That kind of money could have gone a long way. I looked down at her. I was close, and although she had not said a word, I could sense her intensity and devotion. This love lavished on him was somewhat embarrassing, and yet it was what I really wanted to do tell him how he had changed my life and how finally I had a purpose in my life. I felt loved and it was such a gift. But how can you offer any gift to this beloved one? He is the anointed one, anointed by God. And here she is anointing him. I realized that what I felt was jealousy mixed with a deep fear that we were losing him. He tells us to stop judging her. She is preparing me for burial. No, I thought, don't say that. It can't happen. Later, I will remember her just as he asked me to do. And I will remember that he asked us to care for all people the way she cared for him that night. Well, Holy Week builds up over the course of the week, 
And the climax of Holy Week begins with the Last Supper, that Passover meal that Jesus shared with his disciples the night he was arrested. But maybe we should begin Lent with the First Supper. Each of the Gospels records this dinner that Jesus attended where the woman anointed him with oil. The details are very different though and they've led to centuries of misinterpretation. Now Mark places the dinner in the home of Simon, a man Jesus had cured of leprosy. The woman is unnamed. She brings an alabaster jar of costly ointment and pours it over Jesus' head. Complaints came from some of the people at the table, complaints that the ointment could have been sold for a lot of money and that the money could have been given to the poor. Jesus tells them that they can do kind things for the poor at any time, but that he will not be with them forever. He explained that she has anointed his body for burial and says she will be remembered for this act. Matthew's account is exactly parallel to what Mark says. Now John tells us that the dinner took place in the home of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Lazarus, of course, is the man Jesus had raised from the dead. Mary, in John's story, took costly ointment and anointed Jesus' feet this time and wiped them with her hair. In John's gospel, Judas is the one who complains about the waste of money that could have been given to the poor. But John slips in an extra fact, that Judas didn't care about the poor. He wanted the money for the treasury because he was skimming money from those funds for himself. John also tells us that the scent of this perfume filled the room. It's not just a story that you hear, but you can imagine the scent. Now Jesus, in the book of John, again tells them that this woman is anointing him for burial, and he will not be with them, although the poor will always be with them. And then we get to Luke's account of the story. In Luke, this incident takes place at a dinner in Galilee before Jesus even started going toward Jerusalem. So it was at a much earlier time. The host in this case was Simon the Pharisee. And he's the one who complains, not about the waste of money, but he says this woman was a sinner in the town. One possibility is that she might have been a prostitute, but the nature of her sin is not spelled out for us. Jesus blesses her and forgives her for her past sinful life. Now the very next chapter of Luke tells of Jesus curing Mary Magdalene by removing seven demons from her. She was one of many women who became followers of Jesus and supported his cause. Well, the mix-up happened at some time around the 5th century when scholars tried to make all of these stories fit together rather than just honoring the differences. So they they concluded that Mary Magdalene was the sister of Martha and that she had been a prostitute. Kind of an odd conclusion. Today, most scholars believe that the woman who anointed Jesus was not Mary Magdalene and also that Mary Magdalene was not a prostitute. She was a woman who was Um, dealing with demons. There is some speculation that the male-dominated early church tried to discredit the contribution of women who were disciples of Jesus. The fact that Jesus honored and respected women throughout his ministry and that women were an integral part of the early church cannot be argued. Their stories were recorded, although many of their names have been lost to history. There's a lot that we'll never know, but there's also a lot that we do know. Mary, the mother of Jesus, had faith enough to say yes to becoming the mother of the Messiah. She traveled with Jesus and she was present when he was crucified. Anna, the elderly widow and prophet, recognized who Jesus really was even when he was still an infant. 
We read of the devotion of Mary Magdalene, of the mother of James and John, the sons of thunder who sought to have favorable positions for her sons. We hear the names Joanna and Susanna, but we don't know much about them. Mary and Martha, the, the sisters of Lazarus, of course, were very important people in the life of Jesus. The daughters of Jerusalem who wept for Jesus and the women he healed, Peter's mother-in-law, the Syrophoenician woman whose daughter was possessed by a demon, he healed the daughter. There was a widow in the town of Nain whose only son had died and Jesus raised him from the dead for the sake of his mother. He healed a bent over woman at the synagogue and there were women who watched his crucifixion and of course women who came to his tomb to anoint him. Now we have perhaps a skewed vision of, of women in the time of Jesus as being sort of oppressed and stuck at home, but that's not necessarily the case. Women in the time of Jesus could own property. We're told that Mary owns the house in Bethany and women had control of their own money. Just last week, we learned that the widow at the temple had the right to choose how much she gave. She had two coins and she decided to give both of them. And the woman who anointed Jesus chose to spend enough to support a family for almost a year on that amazing ointment. Women could earn their own money by working with textiles, weaving and making clothing, pottery, <clears throat> working as a wet nurse, healing people, cooking and cleaning, hairdressing, even helping people invest their money. <clears throat> and we know that women had freedom to travel. Mary traveled to visit her cousin Elizabeth before Jesus was born. And there were women who went along with Jesus as he went from town to town. They went not to escape their lives, but because they felt peace. They were loved and valued in his presence. So in order to deal with the apparent contradictions in these gospel accounts, maybe it's best to remember that the gospel accounts were not written for a long time after the crucifixion of Jesus. Mark, the earliest gospel, was written about 45 years later. And in that time, some of the details were changed. Who hosted the dinner? In what town? Who was present? Was the host a Pharisee, a healed leper, or just a friend of Jesus? But the core of the story, the really important part, stays the same. A woman was not invited to this dinner and she risked being thrown out of the house. She walked right in. She showed her devotion to Jesus by anointing him on the head, on the feet, it doesn't really matter where she did it, and maybe it was both. She had the means to buy very expensive perfume. It's hard to estimate the value of 300 denarii in today's dollars. I looked up estimates that ranged anywhere from $90 to $6,000 or even more. We really don't know um, how much it was, but we do know that perfumes today can be very costly. And you could certainly spend thousands of dollars per ounce for some of the most expensive perfumes. So the gift of this unnamed woman was of great value. John tells us the scent of the perfume filled the house, so it was strong perfume. Luke tells us that the woman washed the feet of Jesus with her tears and dried them with her hair. In spite of the complaints, Jesus identified what she, that what she did was a good thing. She was preparing him for burial. The men who were closest to Jesus still could not believe that he would be dead soon. But this woman may have heard him say it, and she believed it. She never speaks in any of the gospel accounts, but Jesus uplifts her 
and says that she will be remembered. Today, then, we follow the directions of Jesus and remember what she did. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's enter into a time of prayer. Remember today the extravagant love shown to Jesus and his invitation to remember this woman through our actions of loving others. For when we experience the valley of the shadow of death, we are called to be with one another. We remember today those who tend the sick and dying caregivers, medical professionals, hospice workers, and humanitarians who risk leaving home and even entering dangerous places to help others. And now let us call to our mind's eye those people in our lives who need our advocacy, presence, and prayers. I invite you to speak out loud names or places that you want to add to our prayers today. Let us pray together the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've heard the story of a woman who served Jesus with her extravagant gift, and now we'll sing together the servant song.
this season, we are putting a frame around a bit of life. We'll section off a scene. We'll look long into a face to see what we can see, to know what we can know. Just as we have done with the art and story today, zoom in your focus on the art and story of life all through the week. The divine artist offers us such poignant beauty each day in our own stories, in the stories around us, in the heartbreak and pain and joy and awe of a simple moment turned significant. We can live this life with more attention and intention. May you be blessed by the sacred frames that surround the moments of your life that you dare not miss. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, holy and anointed one, Jesus. Jesus.